Yes, from this hell we call Earth, it is the news. And that was a little bit of a bonus news story there for you, Trent. A, a little bit of a bonus. Hey, there's nothing like leading off the show with nut tapping. Yeah, I, you know, that's a that's actually a record. This is episode, I believe, 299. And that was... Dang, we're almost at 300. Almost there. And that was officially, Trent, uh, uh, the first one, I believe, that opened with nut tapping. So um, congratulations. Thank you. I'm proud to be a part of such a monumental episode. <laughs> yeah. It will be remembered for sure. Oh, and yeah. As usual, we, we start with news about poop. It, that doesn't offend you, does it, Trent? Oh, not at all. Okay. No. All right. I'm just making sure. No. Just making sure. I, I don't. It, it's very important to keep it civil. You know, it's uh, We don't want Super Radio cry, crying or anything. You keeping it civil? Yeah. Well, that's true. All right. <laughs> um, this is a this is a great story. This this might go down as one of the great poop stories of all time, and, and I'm not I'm not exaggerating that. This is uh, this is really good. So just check out the headline. Give me your reaction to this headline, Trent. Woman rescued after falling in toilet trying to get her phone. Uh. My question is, where did she drop? Did she drop her phone in the toilet? <laughs> well, yeah, but this wasn't just any toilet, Trent. A woman accidentally dropped her cell phone into the hole of an outhouse in a national Ooh. forest and fell in while trying to retrieve it. And she had to be rescued by firefighters in Washington state. So this was an outhouse. All right. This is a, uh, oh, yeah, I've heard of him. And just the idea of uh, using an outhouse uh, already cancels me out. This would never happen to me, you know, because I'm not going to be in an outhouse. It's, it's not happening. Um, but uh, uh, Brennan Fire Department Chief Tim Manley said the woman who was at the top of Mount Walker in the Olympic National Forest northwest of Seattle had been using her phone when it fell into the toilet on Tuesday. Manley said she disassembled the toilet seat used dog leashes to try and get the phone and eventually used the leashes to tie herself off as she reached for it. That effort failed and she fell into the toilet head first. Uh, and Ooh. obviously none of her, <laughs> this is not going well for her. She was alone as she tried to get out for 10 to 15 minutes without reaching out. Cause this is embarrassing. Who wants to call authorities and say, I, I, I fell in the toilet uh, but eventually she had to call 911. Um, responding firefighters passed her blocks so she can stand on them uh, so she could reach their harness. Uh, then they pulled her out of the vault and uh, they say that she was uninjured. Maybe her pride was injured, you know, but uh, I guess uh, ultimately she was uninjured. She was washed down and strongly encouraged to seek medical attention after being exposed to human waste, but she only wanted to leave the department. Now, now I, I, I can, I can envision the nine one one call. Right, I wish you had audio of it. Do you have audio of this? I don't. That would be great to have, though. That's a good point. Oh man, I would love to hear. I would just love to hear what she sounded like. You know that I could just picture right nine one one. What's your emergency? Uh, yes, I'm in my outhouse and uh, I, I'm like stuck in the toilet. I could just imagine like the operator maybe pausing and saying, you know, run that by me one more time. You know. Kind yeah. Of yeah. I'm in a yeah. shitty situation. Literally. Um, she's literally in yeah. a shitty situation. And, and, and by the way, I thought this, uh, does, does uh, this surprise you, Trent, that the, um, the chief of the fire department said, I've been doing this for 40 years, and that was a first. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's a fire chief, you know, they've, uh, they, they've seen several things. And, uh, yeah, so... 40 years. That's, uh, that's, that's a first for me. I've never heard somebody that's, actually, well, but, but you know, you know, what would really make somebody's heart skip a beat is if you do drop your phone in the toilet, even though whenever you have, like I have my, uh, I have an iPhone. I love my iPhone. And, uh, if I were to, uh, drop it in, in the uh, toilet, you know, uh, luckily I would have a case or something on it, but still it, it, it wouldn't work. And you gotta, what, what is the old trick? Like to put it in rice if right, you drop your phone. Yeah. yeah. That's 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 the remedy, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's I don't know. The, and it's also an interesting story in the sense that 
I can't imagine many things happening to a person that could be any worse than that. I mean, that's terrible. Not only do you fall into a pile of shit, literally fall into a toilet, but you're stuck in there for, you know, it, it took her 15 minutes to actually call the authorities. How much longer did it take after that for them to get her out of there? But she was stuck in there, you know? I mean, that's awful. Can you, that would, if that happened to me, I could, I think I could safely say that, you know what? That was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. You know, I mean, and you've been around for quite a while. Yeah. I mean, I've been around for hundreds of years and uh, I, I, I know. Nothing like that's ever happened. Anyway, uh, sticking... You, you age rather well. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, sticking in the human waste category here, Trent, a 61-year-old Florida man, um, I know you like that, was oh, arrested yeah, on allegations of urinating on cases of beer inside a Brevard County store. So this dude. I'm disrespectful to the beer. That's well. I think he maybe it was Budweiser, and he figured that there was already piss inside the can. So I kid. If you, don't don't be mad at me if you like Budweiser. Come on, it's a joke. Uh, well, according to uh, a a police report, the man walked into the Hop and Pop convenience store on Easter Boulevard and tried to enter the restroom, but it was locked, which could be a frustrating situation. You're out in public and uh, trying to use a, a restroom that you assume is, pu- is public and it's locked, right? I've been on the road, Trent, and uh, you pull into a gas station for the sole purpose of using the bathroom, and it's Correct. not open. And that's that well, be- Maybe, you know, maybe you get a drink or two along the way, or like, you know, if you wanted like a, a Coke or something, you know, you could uh, you get a drink from the gas station as well as, you know, use the restroom. But yeah, the uh, primary purpose for me, if, you know, if I was on the road and, you know, we need to stop, obviously, you know, there are two main purposes, one to fill your car up with gas, but then two to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So, uh, so he was upset that there was uh, no bathroom. So I would think you'd leave or, or really try some, uh, uh, not that it's, look, if you got to go, you got to go when nature calls, right? To, to me, you get out of there and and uh, you find a place outside. But no, he, he decided that uh, he was going to use the bathroom in the store, pee on the beer. Uh, according to report the report, the video, the store video shows the man facing toward the shelves, unzipping his pants and urinating on cases of beer. The store owner said six cases of beer totaling $113 were damaged and could not be sold. Uh, the report also said that the uh, the man was identified from his license plate, which was captured on surveillance video, and uh, he was charged with a misdemeanor of criminal mischief. So there you go, Trent. Now, I feel bad for the beer. That's not cool. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I do too. Uh, you, you have to think that the man was drunk before he did what he did uh, you would think yeah don't so. mind me i'm just drunk that excuses everything uh, i'm just drunk i need to take a pee and i don't have anywhere to do it so <laughs> yeah. i'm just gonna do it right here since yeah. this damn beer got me drunk i'm gonna pee on it yeah that's a good yeah. philosophy yeah you know kind of kind of giving a uh, kind of give a little payback but yeah anyway I got uh, but uh anyway i have to uh, I, got, I got this one for you here yep. a, a a man in china attempts to steal an electronic bike oh uh apparently uh, he asked the police to uh, help him in this endeavor because uh he uh, just happened to uh, steal a bike but he couldn't get it running mm. so uh so he uh, he uh, asked the uh, police officer for help and the officer recognized the suspect that's a well-known thief and arrested him uh it didn't say how long he was uh, in jail but uh, he just saw a police officer nearby when he was out and found the bike and uh, ended up uh, taking him and, uh, and and arrested him. So, how about that? It's uh, like, have you ever ridden an electric bike? Uh, Rich? No, have you ever I mean, it, to me, it, that's his first crime. No one should ride an electric bike. It, it it defeats the purpose of riding a bike. You're supposed to be healthy. Get that exercise. You know, get you're your get the cardio going. Yeah, get the cardio going. And this dude's using an electric bike. Fail number one. I, I, I mean, right right there, they should take away his bike license. Do you need a license to ride a bike? Uh, not that I know of. Oh, well, they should take away his something. But uh, no, take away his something. I like that. Yeah, so. yeah. Something important to him. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that, that's the first crime. Then the second crime, you know, of course, we knew criminals were dumb, but I mean, asking a police officer to help you, uh, really? That they, you know, they're going to find out. You know, at first they'll say, "Yeah, sure," you know, and then the next thing you know, they're like, uh, "Oh, by the way, uh, you stole this. You're coming with me. You're going to yeah. the big house." Seriously. So, Seriously, uh, I didn't count. Oh, it looks like the first pick happened in this NFL draft, Trent. I did not see it. That's happened. why I paused because I was, was going to get a uh, an NFL draft update from you. I, I ruined it. I, I I wasn't even paying attention. I, I was listening to your fascinating story about the bike. And, yeah, I'm sure uh, you were. <laughs> yeah. I uh, didn't but, tune you out at all. I listened to every word you said. Yeah. Well, I listened to every word you said too, but then keep in mind we got a uh, <laughs> we got the NFL draft going on too. Yeah, I, we, we are we are multitasking on this episode. I was listening to you until I realized I missed the first pick, and I was like, "Oh, I, I just better not miss the fourth and the tenth pick. Those are the only picks that I care about." Please don't miss the twenty seventh pick either. Uh, if we're still on the air, uh, so I, I have a I have a twenty seventh pick. My goodness, um, yeah, that's not much that's to be excited about. Actually good. Trend. The twenty seventh pick. My team's actually good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's what that says. Yeah. For my, now, my team doesn't suck, so uh, the draft isn't very exciting for us. That's a good. I'd rather the draft not be exciting. That's true. That's a good point. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, because hey, if you're picking in the in the top ten, unless you made hey, my some, team's reloaded, dude. And yeah. We're ready. Unless you made some brilliant uh, Trayvon Walker defensive end from Georgia went first to Jacksonville second straight year with the number one pick in the draft. And now the Lions are about to make a selection. Aiden Hutchinson defensive end from Michigan goes number two. So everybody's going two, defense two great here. great defensive guys. I watched Georgia and Michigan several years in, or for, for many games last year in college football. And yeah, both those guys are uh, real quick to the ball. Both those guys had multiple interceptions, uh, not just last year, but uh, in previous seasons that they played. So, you know, those guys are looking for some defense. Uh, Jacksonville needs a little bit of everything, if you want my honest <laughs> opinion. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, one draft isn't going to, you know, fix all of their uh faults and and all that stuff but uh uh but yeah uh, i would say it's it's no surprise for the uh, jags and lions amazing so they go so after a year last year that was so quarterback heavy right you had the first two picks last year um, yeah jacksonville taking the quarterback trevor lawrence and the jets with zach wilson um and this year you get two defensive ends so polar opposites uh, offense quarterbacks last year, this year with the the edge rushers. So there you go. You can argue, you can argue uh, uh, kind of a quarterback on your defense, you know, if, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. Um, so you got the Houston Texans on the clock now and the Jets and the Giants to follow. Uh, Trent, I have a suggestion from you here, uh, for you yes. here. Uh, never buy a sofa from Why a not? secondhand store. Never buy one secondhand. <laughs> not in general. Trent is like, what? Never buy a sofa. Why? I, I want to sit on something. <laughs> how, how, how will I be able to get my couch report if I don't have a sofa? That's a great point. No, no, no. Never buy a secondhand sofa, Trent. Uh, uh, okay. Like, like never get your sofa from Goodwill. You know what I'm talking about? And, and, yeah, I, I know. But uh, why, why is that? Oh, you need a reason? I'm just telling you, don't. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, I have a reason. Uh, a couple in Ireland, right? They were yep. left shocked and revulsed after uncovering a ghoulish treasure trove of thousands of human nails lurking beneath the cushions of their secondhand sofa. Thousands wow. of fingernails in their sofa, Trent. Oh, man. That's disgusting. That is horrible. Can you That's imagine? Not- and uh, you, you know how they discovered it. They're hanging out on their new secondhand sofa. Does that make sense? New secondhand sofa. New secondhand sofa. No, uh, yeah. I mean, I've never heard that. But, I mean, yeah, I guess it's a thing. It's a new se- For them, it's new, I guess. But the secondhand sofa, what happened? The dude, right? Um, uh, he dropped his remote control to his TV between the cushions. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> He reached down the side and extracted a revolting wad of candy wrappers and Whoa. fingernails. <laughs> I almost candy threw wrappers. up just now when, when I was reading the story. That uh, that was rough. Yeah, I yeah. can tell. I'm going to vomit. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's just nasty. Uh, candy wrap. Uh, why would you put candy wrappers in? Uh, man. And I mean, fingernails. I I understand. I mean, it's not a bad thing to eat a piece of candy or two while you're sitting on the couch, but I mean, don't stick the wrappers down the sofa. Throw them in the damn trash can. Is it bad to uh, eat candy and uh, clip your fingernails at the same time? Uh, it's it's ill advised, in my opinion. Yes, it might be dangerous. It's not that there's uh, anything yeah. wrong with it. But Keyword: it's I, I used a uh, I used a uh, a larger word in uh, ill advised. Uh, that's that's for sure. Uh, but but yeah, it's definitely dangerous. Uh, don't do it. It's not. I'm going to use an it. even larger word, Trent. Bad. What's that? Bad. That's B-A-D. bad. Yeah. That's bad. Uh, I, I'm I'm going to use an even larger word. It's detrimental. Ooh. <laughs> I'm a wordsmith. Wow. You know, they call me the wordsmith Trent. That's, if you don't mind, I'm going to stick with bad. Okay. I don't but, mind. I like your that's word, a, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, yeah, I like us, bad. Uh, us, us writers, you know, we have to mm. uh, use, uh, we, we got to use words. Okay. All right. Yeah, all yeah. right. So where yeah. are you go? Where do you go from here in the world of news, Trent? Where would you go? Well, I go to uh, you know we don't like surveys, right? You know, uh, do, do you- I usually say no. Uh, oftentimes, you know, everybody wants you to do a survey. That's a good good thing to bring up, Trent, because um, if I go to uh, buy something at say uh, you know some kind of um, you know, Walmart. Sometimes they give you the receipt, and they say, "Oh, fill out the the uh, call this number, do the survey, you'll get a free something." Or you go to the fast food joint, "Oh, uh, call this number, uh, review us, and uh, you'll get a free fries or something." Everybody and, and wants you to you, take don't a survey. You hate it when you download an app too, like from the app store, and it interrupts your use of the app just to ask, you know, "Hey, are you enjoying this app? Yeah. You know, if so, rate us, like give us a review." You and know? I always wonder, mm-hmm. does anyone actually take the survey? Because I never do. No, I don't. So, but there must be somebody out there doing it because they, they I keep uh, the requests keep coming in. Well, uh, speaking of surveys, uh, a survey finds that almost fifty percent of people in committed relationships are caught cheating. No, not the kind of cheating that you're thinking of, but with money financially. Maybe that's not so shocking, according to people. We've all fibbed a little when it comes to, uh, you know, financial stuff or, or when it comes to things like that. Right. So uh, the the uh, uh, most common financial fib involves shopping like at a clothing store. Mm-hmm. More than 25 percent of women and 8 percent of guys have pretended something was old when it was actually brand new. Thirty two percent of women who have hidden uh, have uh, hidden purchases from their partner. Uh, there, there's more uh, more of a serious side to this, of course, uh, uh, you know less than 10 percent uh uh, confess to uh, opening up a secret banking account while they're in a relationship wow or having secret credit cards so that's horrible and you have there's uh, there's no relationship without trust trent um absolutely yeah uh, i i did want to tell you that uh uh the a cornerback was drafted by the texans there with the third pick and a corner or a quarter cornerback 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 okay. stingley jr uh who uh, i'm kind of surprised i thought if there was a cornerback to go it would be that sauce guy but uh apparently sauce not. Guy? yeah that's i don't even remember his actual name that's how much i know um but the right. sauce guy um his nickname is sauce and and you know why his nickname is sauce why because he likes fast food sauce condiments Hmm. When he was okay. a kid, so he got the nickname Sauce, and it stuck. Sauce. Very interesting. All right, yeah. but I'm surprised. Anyway, I, I'm surprised uh, there was a cornerback that went uh, before the Sauce guy. The Sauce guy. Well, you, well, you're on the clock. So the uh, New York Jets are on the clock with the number four overall pick. I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. The number four pick. This is the future. We got the quarterback last year, uh, and how will we start? Our off season. And in all this seriousness, season. Wilson showed some signs of maturity. He showed some signs of of what he can be. If yeah, he's he did. In, in he, you know, you keep your fingers crossed that that he can grow on it. You gotta get to get him some weapons uh, so he can actually do some things, protect him. But uh, you know, he definitely looked a lot better the last three games of the season and throughout the season. He had plays that uh, were jaw-dropping plays where you saw the raw talent there. So um, hopefully he, you know, you you hope a lot of people say this, but very 
uh, sometimes could remind you of a Patrick Mahomes type player. And I feel ridiculous saying that, but that's not just me saying it. It's other people who see uh, uh-huh. some of the things that he can do. So uh, uh, you keep hope that maybe they'll be able to uh, help him hone that talent and, uh, and craft it into uh, what could be a Hall of Fame type career or at least a, a top 15 player uh, at the position in the league. We'll see. But anyway, Jets are on the clock. And yes, Trent, that is a terrible job with the come on you got you got to be honest with people you know you, yeah you, you can't that that's a that's what they call an aho move man that's, man yeah that's that's stupid dude that's you know, like, yeah, let's just, so if you're in a uh, committed relationship please don't cheat that's all i can say now here's don't a good cheat, solution don't, to don't a problem cheat, don't don't cheat financially and don't cheat you know with another uh, individual either You know, I find, Trent, that there's one excellent, perfect way to uh, deal with any problem. Okay. You know what that is? What? What's that? Make a bomb threat. I think that solves anything. Yeah. Just just, just call it make a bomb threat. A Florida woman. uh, I think that's the second one of this news report. A Florida woman has been arrested months after threatening to blow up her son's high school. My goodness. And and why did she do that, Trent? Uh, I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> she did that because uh, uh, she's gonna, she said she's going to blow up the school unless cafeteria workers started giving her son more food. <laughs> oh, <So>. man. <laughs> you, know, you know, I think they're actually regulating. You know, there, there was a time because, you know, I was in uh, school as well, obviously, in, in high school down here and – and uh, they're, they're, you know, they, the schools actually did have a requirement by the cafeteria people to only give you uh, a certain amount of food. And I don't think it was a school decision. I think it was, you know, do you remember when like President Obama was in, in office and you had like Michelle Obama with the whole uh, kind of like making sure that school meals are healthier and all that kind of stuff. Right. And, and that involved giving out less food. So, I mean, a lot of schools kept that same approach. They didn't move away from it when somebody else was elected into office. They they kept the same method, I think. Yeah, well, it, it's, look, uh, he, apparently he wasn't getting enough food, and her solution was to make a bomb threat. So um, Yeah, I have a solution. Why don't you pack your son's lunch, and he can have as much food as he wants, you yeah, know, as much food as you pack for him. Maybe, maybe some snacks, you know, so, uh, uh, little, some extras in there, Trent, some extras, right? Yeah, I, I need some. I need some uh, some snacks, or like you know, instead of you know, whenever the guy finishes his main course, like give him some afters, give him some dessert. How know, about some- how about some fruit roll up? That uh, that'll hit the spot. Man, I hadn't had a fruit roll up in years <laughs> and years and years. It's been so long. Oh man. Well, you're missing I don't, out. I, I, don't, I don't even think I liked them as a kid. <laughs> it's like a, you know, what? I don't even like fruit roll ups. That that's not uh, that's not for me, dude. That's not. I- for me i had one uh years ago but it, it's, so, a, it's uh, a sheet the, of the fruity gummy it? stuff I, I it's probably not even real fruit they call it fruit. no i know that's true yeah. who did uh, who did your team pick did they pick yet well here the pick is in we are Ooh. patiently standing by to hear who the jets picked with the number four overall pick in and the supposedly 2000. our producer is going to have audio for us too. 22 NFL draft. Uh, there are a bunch of Jet fans there in Vegas. Uh, draft happened. It, it, it used to be that it would happen. Uh, uh, wasn't it in New York? It, it used to happen. Uh, it was. It was at Radio City Music Hall. Yeah, not anymore. Now, now we're in Vegas. It looks very sunny and not as uh, chilly as it would be in, in New York at this time of year. But, man, why do, why do they always have to, with the Jets, they're like, uh, we're going to delay this even longer. Even though they seem like every other team so far, when the pick was in, okay, here we go. Here, here comes Roger Goodell. Here we go. They got the sauce. They got the sauce. Yes, sir. I told Ree, you. They I sure called did. him the sauce guy. Apparently, his name is Ahmad Gardner. And uh, he has the. I'm shocked that a cornerback went before him, but uh, 
there you go. The Jets get their guy. There were a lot of rumors that this was the guy they were looking for. Um, they go defense with the number four pick after getting the quarterback last year with the number two pick. Uh, now, if you're a Jet fan, that was kind of a predictable pick uh, this past week. A lot of people were talking about this. So we'll see. The, the mystery is with the 10th pick, what the Jets do there. Do they try to go uh, rusher uh, on the defensive line? Do they try to go offensive line with the 10th pick? Or what a lot of Jet fans are hoping go wide receiver there, get the, the, the quarterback a weapon. So we'll see what they do, but they get the sauce, sauce Gardner uh, with the number four overall pick of the draft. And the New York That's Giants. That's a great segue because we were talking about food, and now we talk about sauce. We're talking about the sauce. Yeah, we're talking about food. Now we're talking about the sauce. And uh, uh, speaking about the sauce, um, there's a, you know, uh, there was a woman, and I think we talked about this last week, Trent, but she got super duper angry that her fast food burger wasn't meeting her yeah. standards. I and, remember that. Yeah, and, and the same thing happened this week. So apparently that happens a lot. Uh, but this time in Brisbane, Australia, at a um, – maybe they only have this in Australia. It's a place called Hungry Jack's. I have never heard of it. So, uh, And apparently her deluxe pork belly burger was no good. Pork belly burger? Yeah. Oh. It sounds delicious. But she said, I wonder what that entails. She said it was uh, too fatty and had a small <laughs> amount of pork – Hiding underneath the tomato, the pork was hiding behind the tom. Did, did, did the pork think the tomato was going to save it, Trent? I guess so. I don't know what happened. She said, but- "End quote." Disgusting is what it was, and apparently there's video out there of this woman uh, complaining about her fast food. But uh, you, you, do you have uh, do you have audio from the video? I, I I I should have grabbed audio from that one, but uh, it might have been too vulgar. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, Although that would have made it even more entertaining. so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, sometimes you can't go wrong with vulgarity. But then again, only it's like with everything else, only in moderation. That's true. Uh, with that. But uh, anyway, we go from uh, from Australia to Port St. Lucie, Florida. You know oh. where that is? Uh, that's I think that's in uh, in South Carolina. Yeah, Rich. It's in South Carolina. That, that, that's, that's very – that's intelligent. I'm so very smart. <laughs> I'm good at geographies. Yeah, but a teacher in Port St. Lucie, Florida, at a middle school down there, was accused of hitting a child with a broomstick. Oh. And uh, she's facing criminal charges and has been fired from her job after a video appears to show her hitting a student with her broomstick. Uh, <laughs> the uh, story goes on to say, uh, according to the rest report, the... Uh, she the um she, she was charged with child abuse and um let me get to it here sorry um uh, the story's such here. a downer i know don't beat my yeah. kid with a broomstick what's up with that yeah uh, it said uh, st lucie county sheriff ken mascara announced the uh, the teacher her name was get this rich her name was darling darling oh. lundy so it's ironic because her name was Darling, but she didn't have any. She didn't have much Darling behavior when she nailed this kid uh, with a broomstick. Uh, you know, uh, she was uh, in her late thirties, and uh, she was arrested by Palm Beach County's office deputies on Friday, April twenty second, on a felony warrant for one count of child abuse against a First Grove Middle School student. St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office detectives began investigating child abuse allegations. Oh, what's that? I said nothing, Trent. I'm 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 locked in. I, I'm I'm, you know, super interested in your story. Okay, now I understand. Uh, uh, child abuse, uh, Miss Darlene uh, Lundy, on Friday, after learning that the former uh, Forest Grove Middle School student had struck a uh, child with a broomstick because he was uh, uh, supposedly acting out of order. Uh, she. Uh, she had been using the broom to sweep her classroom when when the metal handle broke off. The victim then uh, then the uh, victim uh, picked up the uh, broken handle and ran around with it. Investigators say that Lundy was angered by his behavior and oh. threw the broom handle at the child, missing him but breaking a computer screen. <laughs> you know what what, <laughs> what gets me about this story, Trent? Is What's that? I often want to hit people with broomsticks. But I don't do it. I know. So uh, that's not cool. 
Uh, apparently, according to the arrest report, goes on to say that uh, she pinned the child between two desks and hit him three times. Wow. And then, uh, ironically, this is a long story, so I'm going to sum it up here. It basically goes on to say uh, before she got fired, obviously she was fired and she was arrested. Uh, but uh, she goes on to say that uh, um, she told the kid later that she didn't mean anything by it. And then the next day when she got on campus, she asked for a hug. And uh, <laughs> from the kid, you know, the kid, hey, can I have a hug? I, I wouldn't even touch. I, you, you, you know, if you hit me, you're not even looking. You better not even look my direction. You better, you better not just, look my way. Don't look my way. Because if you do, I might hit you back, uh, depending <laughs> on who it is. Damn. Uh, but, uh, Shrimp be yeah. gangster, yo. Oh, I mean, yeah. Depending on who it is, I, I don't play. <laughs> you know, if you got a problem with me, you come on, yeah. you talk to me about it. Let's talk do this. Straight up. You better ask somebody. I know. I'm ready. I'm uh, <laughs> now. Th- this 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 thing. This story just pissed me off, yeah, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, I can tell. I've uh, never heard you so angry, Trent. Yeah, he's angry. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't be well, and uh, but but I guess uh, I, I guess there was a proactive 12 year old student in the class uh, that was friends with the uh, victim that got hit, and he actually took the video. So he took the video, and the teacher was obviously mad at him because well. The guy, she had they had it on video so the evidence was not in her favor at all and uh she ended up losing her job but uh he said that his only reason for taking the video was to make sure that his friend got justice because nobody should hit his friend like that that was according to a 12 year old guy so congratulate you know just just i mean what 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 heads up um what heads up instincts by him to do that wow crazy Crazy, crazy story. It's a crazy world, Trent. What can you say? Uh, yeah, it is, and uh, I, I hope she, um, I hope she stays in jail for a very, 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 very long time. Trent, um, how about this one? A Florida woman. <laughs> oh man, we're staying. We're still. Uh, our state's bad this week. Actually, a Florida bride, a bride to be, uh, at her wedding, a Florida bride and a caterer are accused of serving marijuana laced food at her wedding and everybody thanked them. No, I'm just oh kidding. My. No, no. A Florida bride and, and a caterer have been arrested on charges of serving. But you would think this, this would be friends and family, but, but you know, they, they were arrested on charges of serving food containing marijuana to unsuspecting guests at a February wedding. According to the officials, the bride 42 years old and the caterer 31 were arrested earlier this week uh, of violating the anti-tampering food law and uh, the delivering of cannabis to the unsuspecting uh, members of the audience at, at their wedding. Some people felt so ill that they went to the hospital where they tested positive for THC, the psychoactive compound in marijuana. Guests reported feeling heavily drugged and said they have not been, they were not warned that this was a, a shocking development, according to uh, a, a detective's report. One guest said that he had trouble operating a cell phone. But oh he's, no! But he's like eighty, so that's to be expected. No, I'm I'm just kidding. That's, oh that's, damn! I'm joking, Trent. Come on, it's just comedy. <laughs> we talked about this, and another <laughs> thought that she might even die, according to the sheriff's report. Uh, one guest the next day told an investigator that on the day of the wedding, she felt stoned and asked the bride whether cannabis was in the food. And the bride said yes and smiled. So apparently wow. the bride thought this was a good idea. So uh, the next time I go to a wedding, should I be uh, um, kind of questioning whether there's marijuana in the food that I eat there? Yeah, you got to be careful. You should at least ask, I guess. Yeah, you know, I, I asked that I, at every weapon uh, at, at every restaurant I go to. If I go to Applebee's, I say, uh, "Hey, uh, is there pot in the food?" So you just you, know, <laughs> you got to ask, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna try that next time and see how it works out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna record. I'm gonna record myself doing it. We can play the audio right here on this yeah. show. You gotta be careful, you know. It's be- what do they say, Trent? They say better safe than sorry. You know, you know, it'd be a funny bit is if, uh, you know, if I did that and, uh, you know, I, I could I could ask him, you know, hey, do you ever listen to this show? Did you hear about the uh, the wedding in Mar- uh, that had marijuana in the food and the, the uh, bride at the 
the wedding that some guy went to had marijuana in it. Uh, by the way, d- does your uh, establishment put marijuana in, in their food? Yeah. And uh, I just I just want to, uh, you know, I can't wait to uh, hear their reaction. I ought to take a survey to every restaurant I go to this week. I ought to ask them that. You know what? Yeah. And uh, there's a, I don't know, it would be great if you got someone to actually say yes. That would be... <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I I just wouldn't name the establishment. That's uh, that's something I would not do. Oh, uh, but, but people want to need... know. There's uh, you know, there's... <laughs> they need to know. Uh, oh, I get it. I think sales would probably go through the roof. Yeah, so. I, I I agree. Uh, uh, what so, else? You so got, uh, go ahead, continue. Do we have any more news from you? Uh, do we have any? Yes, you do. You got one more story. All right, cool. Let's have it. Well, um. A peeping Tom is forced to wear a, br- a bright jacket. <laughs> a bright um, jacket? Yeah. This is, uh, as, after... this is almost as bad a solution as uh, making a bomb threat every time you have a problem. But please, go ahead. Okay. Well, after pleading guilty to voyeurism, is that a thing? Voyeurism. I guess it is. Voyeurism. Voyeurism. Okay. Because my uh, the, okay, cause, uh, where I got this, they spelled the word wrong. Uh, but uh, what's that? Yeah, I, I said, know. how dare uh, they, Trent? We've got bad producing tonight. Writers, they must feel our wrath. I know. Uh, yeah, they should. Well, I'm going to come hunt this writer down. No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to hunt you down. All I'm right, joking. You're going to be the bigger man. Okay, I get it. That's I'm going to be the bigger man, and uh, I, I know what you meant, writer. I, I get it. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no. It's uh, uh, she. Uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, he snuck up to a window and uh, watched this woman uh, tra- change uh, her uh, clothes through the crack in her curtains, uh, and a guy uh, was ordered to wear a fluorescent jacket anytime he is inside and not in uh, in uh, a- anytime he's inside. Can you believe that? Wow, so he's got to wear that jacket. Does it uh, th- is it just bright or does it have some type of uh, is there something written on it? You know, like dunce. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think there's like a written, could could be a written statement, could be, you know, something. I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah, uh, apparently he's got to wear a fluorescent jacket from here on out. Um, That's strange. Anyway, I got one more for you. I just discovered it. So I need to, I need to uh, give it to you. All right. What you got? Uh, Well, you, you can, if you're in Britain, uh, you may be allowed to watch TV in a self-driving car. While Ooh. you're in a self-driving car and you're behind the wheel, you may be able to watch TV. But there are a couple of caveats. Mm. Britain will allow watching TV behind the wheel of a self-driving car. The new UK law comes with some restrictions. A car will need to be driving itself at the time, and the driver must be ready to take control of the car if, if required. Yeah. Drivers will only be allowed to view content through the vehicle's built-in... Um, I can't pronounce this word. Brasha Brubu. What? Brasha Brubu. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, in, in the apparatus is what it says. Right. The thinking, the thinking here is that an infotainment, or uh, I, I did, I gave the best I could, uh, can stop showing a TV show or film when the car needs the driver's attention, unlike a phone using a handheld phone while driving, hmm. uh, regardless of its use. It will remain legal. Right. So it's uh, so it's pretty pretty interesting. So like for example, if uh, you know you're in a self driving car and you know you you have to do something that the computer can't, you know it might it might like you know give you a beep or something, and then all of a sudden stop showing the uh, film. So the uh, the user is automatically going to be distracted. You just better make sure you have the time to uh, react so you don't get in a wreck or something. Uh, you know that that would is what I'd be concerned mm-hmm. about. I, but, I don't uh, know how you guarantee that. Uh, you know, uh, I don't I'll, think you can. I'll tell you what though. Um, before Trent, I was not sold on self-driving. I don't know. How do you, how do you feel about that? Would you feel comfortable getting into a car knowing that it it wasn't a human driving it, but actually a machine? Uh, I mean, in a perfect world and if they work yes because as a person who uh is unable to see i would be able to go a lot more places that i want to without having anybody to go with me That's or having to go with point. me so that would be cool but good point good point yeah but yeah but other than that i mean in terms of you know, like being nervous absolutely i would be because you never know what the machine's going to do you can't trust technology uh rich you can't yeah because you know usually if my internet stops working or uh, something uh, kind of flaky starts happening, 
with technology, you know what I do? What? I unplug it and plug it back in. Um, oh, that's the but, oldest trick in the book. But if you're in a car and, you know, the, the uh, technology goes wonky, you're just going to die. You can't unplug it and plug it back in. You know what I mean? Take the key out of the ignition. <laughs> <laughs> then you're really going to die. This is a good idea. You're going like 70 on the highway. Yeah, uh, you're going 70 on the highway, <laughs> and then you go 70 to nothing. Yeah. 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 I, then you're really going to get run over. So I don't know, but before I had zero interest in, in getting in a self-automated uh, uh, vehicle. Uh, however, if I can watch television, now I'm down. Now I'm down. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, it would take you know, if you could watch uh, just a television, if you could watch, I don't know, a movie, or you could watch a, a TV show and everything. And that's that's over in uh, Britain. So if you want to go over to Britain to uh, ride in a self-driving car. Um, more power to you. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I just, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Uh, and that is the news for yours truly. All right. So I, I have one final story here. And finally, Trent, um, how about this? A $5 implant in your hand, a microchip, will let you pay for items just by waving your hand. Actually, the microchip is $300. It costs uh, five dollars to implant it, uh, so it's a three hundred dollar thing. The future is here. Many people are already making purchases uh, with their phones or watches. But how about your hand? The how about it? The company Wallet More is uh, taking technology to the next level, selling implants the size of a grain of rice that connect to a digital wallet app, allowing users to pay with a swipe of their hand. Currently, the $300, the $300 chips are available in Europe, where at least 200 people have had them implanted, according to the company. Um, so there you go, a $300 implant. I don't have to reach into my wallet and get my debit card or pull out my phone or the, with the Apple Pay and you all use of that. Apple Pay, that's what I was just going to ask you. Yeah, now I can just use my hand. So you could be just waving at somebody and, hey, how people think you're just waving and saying, hi, hi, how yeah. are you? And the next thing you know, oh, you just paid for this. Yeah, or, or, you know, I give you $300 by accident. I'm like, no, I was just saying hi. What's wrong with this thing, you know? No, yeah. <laughs> I was just saying hi. Oh, uh, Trent, you've received $300 in your bank account. Oh, thank you. I will gladly take it. I remember uh, reading something about this like ages ago that said this was the beginning of the apocalypse. Once people start getting implants, uh, you know, that uh, it, it's an implant you could use as your wallet and identify yourself, it means the end of the world is coming. Right. It's the end times. It's the end of the world yeah. as we know it. Mark of the beast with the yeah. microchips. Anyway, but, but yeah, apparently uh, this is it. This is the end of the world, Trent. Oh, my. I've okay. heard that. Oh, did, you, did, you, did you do that on purpose? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's the end of the world as we know it. Oh, yeah. my. Oh, no, wait. That's not how the song goes. I thought that's what you're doing. That's how the song yeah, should go. It's the end of the world as we know it. Oh, my. Way, <laughs> way better. Way better. I yeah, think. I know. So, yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, anyway, we, we've would all, you? We've all heard that song. Yeah. Uh, would you get the, uh, would that be worth it to you, Trent, to get the, uh, the microchip implanted so you could pay with your hand? I mean, yeah, you're right. It would save you a lot less, you know, it'd save you some hassle of not having to get your credit card or not having to pull cash out of your wallet if you had to pay cash for something. So, but, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it, I think there's, it sounds too good to be true. I think there may be a caveat or something that nobody's telling anybody about. Well, it's, it, well, here it is, Trent. You, you also has to, you also have to, uh, download, uh, the app. <laughs> oh, well, see, yeah, I, I'm tired of downloading apps. Isn't that weird? Like I, I get an implant, but I have to download an app to use it. That's so crazy. Yeah. Shouldn't that, shouldn't that eliminate, you know, yeah. you having to download the app since you got the implant, but it's like everything no you buy, you know, it's like, Oh, you got to download the app with this thing, you know? Uh, and, now, now, oh, uh, now I get an implant in my body, and I have to download. It's like, it's like baseball it. tickets. Like, wait, Tropicana Field used to be, um, 
used to have like the paper tickets where you had to print them out on a printer and obviously and, and obviously but if you wanted to go to a Rays game you know I learned this last year you had to download the MLB ballpark app in order to uh, to get the to get the uh, tickets and and now you have to you know you gotta you t- do all that and you gotta you know scan the tickets in your hand whenever you're going to the trop and and you know scan, well, I, scan I bet you that's that's how it would be now if you had this implant this microchip you could just show up to the ballpark and and show your tickets with your hand yeah exactly that's that's essentially what you're doing now except you just have to have your phone with you i think i'm down i'm doing it dude i'm getting i'm getting the microchip i'm getting the implant let me know how it works first and then i'll and then yeah. i'll uh, see what's going on maybe i'll get two it's, it's always better to get two i think get them in both hands yeah yeah you know you uh, get get two and and two's better than one that's that's what i've been taught